Thank you all for being here with us today. Uh, Secretary Mattis and I are very pleased uh, to welcome our Canadian counterparts for Mr. Christopher Freeland and Minister of Defense uh, Harjit Sajjan uh, to Washington. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, it was a great day. Uh, and indeed, it was my honor to host this uh, State Department uh, 2 plus 2 strategic dialogue. Uh, and it's a great opportunity for us to have gotten some serious work done. Uh, but it's also a uh, discussion amongst friends. Uh, the force have gotten to know each other quite well, and we've achieved a lot together. Our meeting today comes after the historic signing of the United States-Mexico-Canada Agreement, which was a tremendous victory for all three countries. I want to especially thank uh, Minister Freeland for her efforts to make this happen. Uh, look, the final deal is a home run. Uh, it modernizes NAFTA to address 21st century issues, uh, 21st century economy, open trade and business, opportunities for United States farmers and manufacturers, reduce uh, trade barriers amongst the three countries. In today's meeting, the four of us discuss how we can continue to build off of this, uh, take this achievement and make progress on a worldwide range of bilateral and global issues. On the bilateral front, we discussed our joint efforts to ensure North America is vigorously protected by both our militaries and close cooperation with one another. We also had the chance to discuss our bilateral cooperation to promote economic security by countering technology transfers, intellectual property theft, and other attempts to acquire sensitive technology from our two countries. This will enhance security by ensuring our economic competitiveness and preserving our military capabilities. These joint efforts support a comprehensive trading relationship and millions of jobs in our two countries. In addition to domestic priorities, we work through a range of global issues as well. We talked about our work and collaboration as members of NATO. We discussed our response to the situation in Ukraine. Uh, I expressed uh, my concern over Russia's recent aggression in the Sea of Azov, where it rammed, op rammed and opened fire on Ukrainian vessels. We also had the important opportunity uh, to discuss our shared commitment to improving security in Iraq, where our nations have both made tremendous sacrifices in the name of freedom. I spoke, too, of the importance of applying pressure on the Iranian regime to stop its efforts to undermine Iraq's democracy and security. It was, it was great, too, uh, to talk about how we've worked closely together on North Korea, and I thank my Canadian counterparts for enforcing all of the UN Security Council resolutions and encouraging other countries to maintain pressure as well. Of course, given the close relationship between the United States and Canada, disagreements will undoubtedly arise from time to time. But our countries have always worked closely together to resolve these challenges, including through regular and open dialogue like we've had here today. I'm very confident that as rough patches emerge, we'll work through each of those challenges. Uh, with that, I'd like to turn things over to Foreign Minister Freeland to make a few remarks, and then if you'd introduce Secretary Mattis, that'd be great. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mike. Uh, merci beaucoup. Bonjour tout le monde. Uh, Hello, everyone, and thank you for being here. First of all, I would like to thank the Secretary of State Pompeo and the Secretary of Defense Mattis for their warm welcome today. Canada and the U.S. have one of the closest relationships in the whole entire world. We are allies and partners in areas such as trade, border protection, and of course, hemispheric defense and international security, especially through NATO and NORAD. I would like to thank our hosts for giving us the opportunity to meet here today and to further discuss these topics as well as other issues of common interest for our two countries. There are no closer partners in the world than Canada and the United States. We share the world's longest undefended border and we are each other's largest export market. Since the Second World War, we have worked side by side to build the rules-based international order and to fight for liberal democracy around the world. This two plus two meeting has been in the works for a while, and it is a real pleasure to have been able to spend some time with our US colleagues here in Washington to discuss our bilateral relationship and also some of the global challenges that we're confronting together. As is always the case when we meet, we discussed a number of issues around foreign policy, defense, and international security that reflect the deeply shared values that unite our two countries. We discussed China and the case of Huawei CFO Meng Wanzhou, 
building on a conversation that Secretary Pompeo and I began soon after her arrest. We all agree that the most important thing we can do is to uphold the rule of law, ensure that uh, Ms. Ming's right to due process is respected, and that the current judicial process in Canada remains apolitical. We also discussed some consular issues, two which are very concerning for Canada today, the detention of Michael Kovrig and Michael Sapfor. On Russia and Ukraine, Minister Sajin and I expressed our condemnation of Russia's harassment of shipping in the Sea of Azov and the Kerch Strait, and in particular, its recent aggressive action towards an illegal seizure of three Ukrainian vessels on November 25th and the imprisonment of Ukrainian sailors. We call on Russia to release these sailors. Canada unwaveringly supports the people of Ukraine, its sovereignty and territorial integrity within its internationally recognized borders. We touched on some hemispheric issues, including the brutal authoritarian regime that is causing a dangerous crisis in Venezuela, as well as troubling developments in Nicaragua. We took the opportunity to reiterate our support for the United States efforts towards a denuclearized Korean peninsula and our efforts in the area of sanctions evasion. In an ever-changing global landscape, it's important that countries are able to nimbly respond to flagrant violations of the international order. An effective and targeted sanctions regime is key to this. Canada and the U.S. both have Magnitsky legislation, and we discussed ways to work together even more closely in this area. As a founding member of NATO, Canada will continue to do its part for transatlantic security and stability. My colleague, Minister Sajjan Harj, will speak to some of the important work that we're doing alongside the U.S. in NATO and as part of the Global Coalition to Defeat Daesh. Uh, as Mike said, we spoke about our trading relationship and we talked about the fact that we now have a modernized trade agreement for our continent. And I do agree with Mike that this is a good deal for all three countries. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that Minister Sajjan and I did raise one of those difficult bilateral issues that Mike referred to, uh, the U.S. imposition of steel and aluminum tariffs under Section 232. Uh, Canada continues to take the view that these tariffs are unjust and illegal, and we spoke to our partners about how the national security justification for these tariffs we believe is inconsistent with our close relationship. I met earlier today with Ambassador Lighthizer, and we also discussed the 232 tariffs this morning. The close relationship between Canada and the United States is a model for integration and creative collaboration on the world stage, and today was a great opportunity to talk about how we can work even more closely together on our continent and around the world. I'd like to thank you again, Secretary Pompeo, Secretary Mattis, for hosting us. Canada deeply values and appreciates our partnership and opportunities to continue to work even more closely together. Uh, and it is now my pleasure to introduce uh, a tremendous uh, public servant, a great friend of Canada, Secretary Mattis. Well, thank you, uh, Minister Freeland. And I echo Secretary Pompeo's comment that ours was a discussion among friends. Uh, Minister Sejan and I last saw one another just eight days ago in Ottawa and today's meeting signals how our two militaries work to stay closely aligned on a range of issues worldwide. For Americans feel an enduring, almost familiar kinship with Canada, and in my case, it is familial. My mother's family immigrated to America after my grandfather was wounded in action in World War I in the Canadian Infantry. Canadian and American forces have fought bravely alongside each other in the Great War at Normandy, to Kandahar, Afghanistan, following the 9-11 attack on our country. And today we continue our cooperation in pursuit of our mutual security. We are united in the North American Air Defense Command, where Canadian and U.S. fighters together guard the skies above North America and our 360 million people. We are united in NATO, where we uphold transatlantic unity and stand with European allies against the full scope of Russian malign influence to include Moscow's recent brazen contempt of international law in the Kursk Strait and action against the Ukrainian people. Canadian and U.S. trainers in Western Ukraine and our battalions in the Baltics represent our combined efforts to build stability and deter further provocative activity. 
Canada and the United States are united in security because we are united in democracy, and democracies stick together for the common defense. Today, we focused on enhancing our already strong cooperation in a number of areas that you've heard about, from foreign military sales to sanctions coordination. Like Secretary Pompeo, I am grateful for Canada's leadership enforcing unanimous UN Security Council resolutions on sanctions that support the denuclearization of North Korea. Regarding the Middle East, we affirmed the need to continue the fight against ISIS hardened core and to maintain support to our partners in Iraq, an approach endorsed as well by 16 nations we met with last week in Ottawa. Accordingly, we are evolving our defeat ISIS coalition because we must not fall into complacency recognizing that ISIS remains a strong terrorist enemy as it adapts to the crushing loss of its physical caliphate. To close, last month, Americans observed Veterans Day. Canada has Remembrance Day, but why, whatever the name, together we recalled our shared battlefield sacrifices and the many instances when the maple leaf and the stars and stripes have flown side by side against threats to our shared values. Come what may, I am confident Canada and the United States will continue to work shoulder to shoulder now and in the future. And Minister Sejan, my friend, the floor is yours. Great. Thank you, Secretary Mattis, and thank, thank you, Secretary Pompeo, for your being tremendous host. Uh, uh, Secretary Mattis and I also share another uh, uh, mutual uh, understanding, which is we're both from the West Coast as well, uh, which he reminded me of uh, early on. As my colleague, uh, Mr. Freeland said, we have had a productive meeting to discuss our shared defense priorities. The United States is Canada's most important ally and defense partner. Our relationship is longstanding, deeply entrenched, and multifaceted. It was, our relationship was forged on the battlefield side and fighting side by side. It is rooted in our shared geography, in our common values, it, it, in our historic connections, and in our highly integrated economies. And it, it is uh, unique in its levels of integration and military to military cooperations at all levels and across the globe. The Canadian Armed Forces and the United States military stand shoulder to shoulder to protect and defend the continent of our citizens. NORAD is the most notable example of this uh, cooperation. We have been working together seamlessly for over 60 years since its inception to protect North American against current and future threats. Our militaries are highly interoperable. We are constantly learning from each other through our regional, continental, and international exercises. We provide collective transatlantic defense through NATO. We are participating in multinational efforts to also to enforce uh, sanctions against North Korea. At the uh, uh, UN uh, uh, commanding Korea, Canada is the second largest contributor after the US. And earlier this year, General Air became the first Canadian to hold the post of deputy commander. And last week, as Secretary Mattis just said, Canada co-hosted the counter-ISIS uh, ministerial meeting in Ottawa, and we discussed the next steps to ensure the lasting defeat of Daesh and its networks. And Canada remains committed to the coalition. This is evident through our Operation Impact and our leadership of uh, the NATO training mission in Iraq. As Minister Freeland mentioned, Canada also supports Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity in the face of Russian aggression. We have trained more than 10,000 Ukrainian soldiers as part of Operation Unifier. And at any given time, we have about uh, 800, uh, over 800 Canadian Armed Forces members deployed on Operation Reassurance. And they are supporting NATO deterrence measures in Eastern and Central Europe alongside our American allies. Canada is also leading NATO's Enhanced Foreign Presence Battle Group in Latvia, similar to the U.S. presence in Poland. And we have recently extended this mission by four years. In the Asia uh, uh, Pacific region, Canada is engaged in our projection and working with the U.S. and other partners on regional security and defense cooperations. And ladies and gentlemen, these are just a few examples of the depth and breadth of the Canada-U.S. defense partnership. Our cooperation offers both countries greater securities, and we will always remain strong allies and partners and even better friends. Thank you.